So here we are, everyone. I just check the screens to make sure everything's running on both sides. It's looking good, looking good. All right, move on here. I'm excited. I got some things for you guys today. By the time we're done here, you're going to see what I mean by that. And I really hope that everybody gets the gist of what I have to say. It's a short presentation. I'm going to take you into a mobile app uh, that I create. And I'm also going to take you over to Best App Mobile's website that was just finished up the other day so that you guys can get a feel of how that system works. Uh, basically, I run Best at Mobile as Leland Best, and I am the owner or co-founder and CEO. My wife is actually the CFO, uh, and we have a partner over in Avon, Ohio, who helps us run this business. So, um, give you a little more about what we do and who I am. Um, you know, to start things off, your customers are mobile folks, so is your business. Uh, I'm just going to give you a rundown of who I am. Again, my name is Leland Best. I've developed the Best App brand for myself, uh, which would really refer to Best App Mobile and Best at Last. I have several others in the making, so I intend to create that Best App brand and keep it going from this point forward. I'm an 18-year sole proprietor and entrepreneur. I've been running my own businesses from home since around 1995, and uh, it started out part-time, but over the first couple of years, I went full-time and quit my full-time job and continued to run that type of way when it came to uh, business in my life. So I have built several lucrative startup companies uh, known as DraftDoll, ShopFact, SivLink, Radar, and of course now the Best App brand. So I've been around the block a few times when it comes to building businesses and starting off from scratch. So. Um, this is really what I do, uh, and, and in the process, I produce six figures plus through self-employment. I, I have had some good years and some bad years, of course, but I always consider the good years the better half, so I continue to uphold that in, in the way I look at things, the glass being half full. Um, I am professionally trained, I'm certified, and or I'm self-taught to varying degrees of expertise in all types of avenues, sales, graphics, production, uh, marketing, and business branding. Uh, so it's not as though everything I do has come from a degree from a, a high-end you know, Ivy League college or anything of that sort. I don't have any types of um, MBAs or BSAs or anything of that nature. I've basically learned on my own or, or taken you know, certain certifications and trainings that I needed to, to continue in my business. Along with that, I'm a 30-year-plus veteran of, and computer operator, you might say, or veteran computer operator. Uh, for 25 of those years, my experience has been primarily in computer hardware construction and software installations. So I started out young as a, a high school. Uh, basically, I was an independent study person in computer technologies. I started when the cassette tape was what it took to save data on an 8K ROM uh, chip for a, a Trash 80, we called it, the old TS-80. Um, so I've started since computers first came around. Uh, that kind of ages me, but uh, I've been into design build on all of my own business websites, so I do everything basically from scratch or template format uh, and create my own branding per se for each of those sites as I go along. I've worked in WordPress, Joomla, uh, HTML. I do a little bit of Java and such now and then, but I really don't play too much in the coding itself. I do use that uh, aspect in my websites, but I usually let someone else do some of the programming. So um, I'm a licensed firefighter too, and that came in. And I plus the plus is for all the other certifications along those lines that I have. I wear several hats, folks. Uh, back in April 2002, I actually started in around September 2001, which means yes, right along the time that the towers came down in New York City, I was becoming a fireman in the academy. So. Uh, I questioned it my, myself at the time why I was doing such a thing when, when buildings were crumbling due to terrorist activities, but uh, it didn't stop me from doing what I needed to do for myself. I, I felt it was my way. I didn't go into the military service. I wanted to, but I couldn't at the time. So it was my way to feed back to my community. Um, and in that aspect, I became also uh, certified as a restoration and disaster recovery specialist when a need arose. Uh, for one of my businesses, I had to shut down, and I went to work for someone for a short period of time and got certified and came back out. And since then, I've developed a company known as Radar.com. So who are you? I expect some of you folks out there are either network affiliates, if you've found my links out there on Facebook or in any of the other groups that I attend. 
Uh, you may be internet marketers. You could be multi-level marketers or doing MLM. I'm hoping that some of the folks here today are also lawyers, doctors, real estate agents, and maybe even just some sole proprietors, some small business owners, and some entrepreneurs. Uh, this demonstration that I'm about to give is really focused for all of these particulars um, and any other various professionals and managers that might be out there running small businesses. I think you're going to find the information you're going to gather here today is going to really um, open your eyes to the mobile industry and what it can do for your business today. So. Why are you here? Uh, I'm going to guess and, and speculate that probably you got a day off from your 9 to 5 job even though it is 6 p.m. I normally hold these webinars around 3 o'clock uh, so I did have this set up for uh, an earlier presentation and the dates on these or the times on these might be a little hashed out. Um, maybe you've never seen a mobile application in action or you've heard about mobile apps but you're not so sure how, you, how this is going to be able to help your business. Well, I'm glad you're here because you know I you know, maybe you've been involved in network marketing and, and you thought even mobile marketing sounded lucrative. And I can tell you right now that there's going to be a couple who just showed up just because you weren't sure, you know, what you were doing. You saw a link, you clicked on it, you signed up for a webinar because you were bored or what have you, and you're not really sure why you're here. But that's okay. Thanks for coming, and I think you may at least have a little bit of fun while you're here today. I, I'm excited for what I have to present to you guys today. Uh, why am I here? Well, as I mentioned, I enjoy seeing people succeed in business, and I do love to engage in, with small business owners and my fellow entrepreneurs. Uh, I have something that can help your business, so I, I get all pumped up when I can help those folks in the same line of work that I am. Uh, and there's information here about the mobile industry that I'm sure not all of you know anything about, and I would just like to share that information with you if you don't. So, uh, and then at the end, I do have something pretty special for all of you. Um, and you'll understand when we get there. So, And me, of course, I don't have a 9 to 5 job anymore, so this is what I do. I get out here and I present myself on webinars. Uh, I'm also a sales affiliate for several different webinar platforms. So if any of you out there are interested in doing what I do a little more for your business, please hook up with me on this regard also. Uh, I don't just do mobile applications. I also do webinar software, so I have several different... Uh, branches off of that that uh, can fit different varying business models. Um, to get into the mobile industry, uh, just this little chart, and it's a little outdated and I apologize, but I'm going to get some more newer graphics very soon. Um, this chart starts out from 2007 to 2011, and obviously it's a couple of years uh, outdated and you probably don't know what these numbers represent, but they certainly elevate quickly from the period of 2008 up into 2011 over a three-year span. Well, in that three-year span, the growth of the mobile industry has been incredible, and I can't even begin to fathom the, the what you might call cumulative effect that's taken place in the mobile industry. You know, in just over three years, over 20 billion, that's with a B, not an M, billion apps have been downloaded between iPhone and Android devices. And what I'm talking about here are all those little Angry Bird type apps that you see on your cell phone. The big one now I think is Candy Crush. Uh, these are gamified apps, of course. Uh, but there are also monetary components to that. Now, I'm not necessarily here to show you how to design and build an individual application for a game, but we're going to touch on that a little bit later. Um, what I'm going to show you is strictly from a business perspective, um, and you'll get a little better just as we go along. These numbers continue to grow, and honestly, with the operating system share that's out there, this may be a, a screen that's a little hard to read, but I hope you can see this. It basically shows how the Android versus the um, Apple iStore, or the iOS as, as it's called, and then we also have the BlackBerry market along with the Windows mobile phones and any other various uh, Palm Pilots and things that follow in under that. You can see that Android has really taken over a big share of the market recently. And that's mostly because Apple is a higher end product. Its cost price point is quite steep for some folks that might not have the ability to buy like an iPhone 5 for 400 or 500 or 600 dollars or an iPad but they can get in for a lesser cost at the lower Android level which you know you get Android phones for free when you sign up for a, a cell phone service or you can buy these other Android style tablets for a couple hundred dollars like the uh, 
the one that's available, the Kindle Fire in particular, those run around $199 to $299 a piece. So uh, the cost factor is definitely varied, and it's given Android an opportunity to break into the mobile industry at a much faster pace than was expected. Uh, over 500 million Android phones have been activated, and that's that's quite a number when you think about it. Um, over 300, 000, or 300 million, see I can't even fathom these numbers, over 300 million iPhones have been activated. So you can see that almost twice as many Androids have been put into service as there have been iPhones. Um, you know, that doesn't really take away any credibility from Apple, but it does go to show that those that want to get into the market can get in at the Android level for, for very relatively inexpensive cost. And with these numbers, I want to take it a little bit further because now that Android owns about 47% of the U.S. smartphone market and we look at these astounding numbers, it does tell us something about humanity on the planet. And what we're going to find out here, you know, iPhone only owns 29% as we were speaking of. This is the mobile reality, folks. You know, this is what it used to be to get around. You had your Palm Pilot, you had your pager, you had your watch, you had your VCR, and notice the digital watch that's sitting there. Uh, you had a Sony Walkman for music, you had your Polaroid camera for instant snapshots, and you had, of course, that's one of the old classic cell phones, and that doesn't even go back to the type of cell phone I used to have. My first cell phone was in a bag, and it weighed five and a half pounds, I believe, or maybe even more than that. Um, and you had to carry it with a strap, and you had to plug it into your cigarette lighter to charge the huge battery that came with it that's, that was as big as that cell phone laying on the floor there. And, of course, the laptop, which even that old laptop that you see there, that's an old Apple, obviously. Um, I be, no, that's an old IBM, I believe. Um, all of this, everything that's on that floor in this first photograph, has literally been combined into the size of a device that fits in your shirt pocket. So, you know, electronics and technology have come to such a level of, of condensed, you know, miniaturization now that we cannot, 10 years ago we could have never fathomed what mobile was going to be um, because we used to carry around these huge phones and we thought that was just, wow, oh my gosh, we can disconnect from the cord, we can get away from the house, we can actually make a phone call while we're in our car, and now we can do all of these things from the convenience of a cell phone. So. Um, how much further could it go? Well, I'm going to show you something, and this is more for humor's sake. Um, this is what I call the cell phone versus the toothbrush. Okay, and you may not understand where in the world I'm coming up with this concept to begin with, but it's really going to play off of what the reality of mobile is nowadays, folks, and this may very well blow your mind. Take into consideration Mobile phones versus toothbrushes, and believe it or not, this is in billions, not in millions, okay? This comes from the 60secondmarketer.com. You're going to find that the world population right now is 6.8 billion people, all right, plus or minus a few people here and there. Um, the number of global mobile subscriptions is 4.6 billion, and the number of global mobile users is 4.6 Point zero billion. That's four billion people with a mobile phone. But we only sell 3.5 billion toothbrushes a year. And when you think about it, I usually buy more than one toothbrush a year, right? I hope I do anyway, because I don't really like to scrub my teeth with the same toothbrush all year long. What does that say about how many toothbrushes are actually used every year? Well, if there's 6.8 billion people and 4 billion of them use a mobile phone and only 3.5 billion brush their teeth or buy a toothbrush, wow. Uh, okay, I guess I'm kind of glad I'm talking with people on a mobile phone and not face-to-face -face half the time because obviously about a half a billion of those have some pretty nasty breath right now. Anyway, what if we were to combine these to, for a potential profit? <laughs> Just to throw that out there, I'm sure sooner or later, or maybe they already have developed this particular device that maybe all those cell phone users out there, these 4.6 billion users, will all learn to brush their teeth if we were to just combine the two together, right? Well, honestly, you shouldn't laugh just yet because this is a fact that has already taken place in this world. This is called the Beam. Uh, the Beam brush is a Bluetooth 
<laughs> device. Yes, that's right. It's a toothbrush, Bluetooth, um, that connects to your cell phone. I'm not here to promote Beam, folks. So uh, if you want to check this out for yourself, this is their uh, .com page, I believe. And if you were to just go out and probably Google Beam toothbrush, you would find out what it's all about. So um, joke, all joking aside, we can see already where mobile has infiltrated every aspect of our daily lives and now we have the Bluetooth toothbrush so I just wanted to throw that out there for everyone to see um, and then we'll just move on with the presentation why mobile uh, fact is customers are using mobile to find your competition folks uh, they're out there in your businesses every day and if you saw the video at the entrance screen to this webinar uh, you'll understand the percentages when it comes down to the facts and this comes right out of Google's understanding smartphone users from 2011 so you have to understand these numbers are even short from what they would be now two years later. 95% uh, of smartphone users have searched for local information. 61% of users call a business after searching and 59% visit the location. And out of those, 90% of these people act on their sale for within that 24-hour period. I mean, how many times have you gone into a store? I know I have the Shop Savvy app on my cell phone. And when I go to a store and I find a product that I think I want to buy but I think the price is high, I scan the barcode and I check to see where else I can find it cheaper. And honestly, folks, if I find it down the street at Walmart for less, I'm going to get in my car, I'm going to drive down to the other store, and I'm going to make sure that I'm buying the more, the least expensive version of the identical product that I can get my hands on, if it's within reason. If I have to drive 40 miles to get to it, honestly, I'm not going to go take that drive to save a few dollars. But I'm certainly going to take that drive if I can save twenty, thirty, forty dollars and only spend five or ten dollars in gas to get there. Of course, gas at four dollars and twelve cents a gallon is a little hard to uh, make much of a difference. But we'll see as we go through. Another fact: not having a mobile experience can lose your you business. Um, and this comes from CompuWare. What users want from mobile? From again the same date, 2011. Again, these numbers would have to be adjusted for today's. Uh, a consumer, 57% would not recommend a business with a bad mobile site. 40% have turned to a competitor's site after a bad mobile experience. And 23% of adults, believe it or not, have cursed at their phone when a site doesn't work. I mean, have you ever thrown your phone onto the couch or on the floor or into the front seat of the car because you're trying, and obviously you're not supposed to do this, folks, but I know you do. You get out there and you try to search on your cell phone while you're driving things that you want to see, and if that app's not working and you're trying to drive, you get frustrated, confused, you throw your phone away. So um, this is just a reality with the way people run their lives with their cell phones now. Another fact, your customers prefer apps over mobile websites. Um, Mobile websites are a little limited, and you can see from even the dates from June 2010 to December 2011 that the number of minutes that people used to browse on mobile apps versus their web consumption within a, a mobile website. Um, these numbers, obviously, the green being the web browsing and the blue being the mobile app itself, uh, those numbers, as time went on, of course, mobile apps weren't that big a hit back a few years ago, but and the numbers were a little reduced, but as time has gone on over these past few years, and honestly now, folks, I could get another source from Alexa, I'm sure, that would show that the number of minutes has dwindled increasingly on the mobile websites and gone up to the mobile app. Because of the features within an app, it brings everything up in your face on your phone. Um, some mobile websites, and even websites alone, when you're browsing within a browser on a mobile, uh, you don't always have the ability to read the text and you have to zoom, zoom, zoom to get in there and actually see what's on the graphic um, to be able to fill in a form or what have you. And that is the true advantage to a mobile app is all of these features are built at a mobile level and aspect so that people can simply point, click, shoot, enter, and you're, you're through the process. So um, here at Best at Mobile, we offer both a mobile app and a mobile website, which converts your original website content, let's say, into, and not all, we don't strip your website down and actually reface the entire thing. We take the true hardcore aspects of your website that are your money makers, and we produce it within a mobile app so that the app does the work that your website would, just like if I was sitting at a computer at the front, in front of a screen at my PC. I would be able to do the same types of things within my app, maybe faster, maybe more efficient, and at least get right to the nuts and bolts of everything, not have to worry about all the extraneous stuff that's out there on the site. You know, this will appear in the iTunes App Store, 
and in the Android marketplace through Google Play and we you know mobilize your existing site as I said so it's a complete mobile marketing solution this is not just a simple you know let's throw together an app for angry birds and set it out there and see where it goes because that is a whole different strategy folks if you want to get involved with building mobile applications then that's something that someone has to have some computer programming knowledge um, it can be done by, by a lot of different individuals and you can reface apps if you wanted to and then put them out on the market for either free with buy-ins later or as a pay-to-use app um, but that's not even what we're here for and I'm going to show you why you want to consider us over here at Best Hit Mobile. Uh, we make mobilizing your business simple and pain-free. This isn't about you know starting from scratch, but it does begin with a lot of the stuff you already have in place. Uh, we're going to bring in new business and increase repeat customers to your site, and we will also help handle everything from start to finish. So uh, we're mobile experts. We're extremely affordable. We're fast and easy to use. Um, the app can display a lot of information, okay? And this is just an example of, of a pizza menu, let's say, um, from overseas. It can display a map of where your business is located. That's going to give them information on services. Uh, like I said, the restaurant menu, whether it's in text or PDF form, all the locations of your business, uh, brick and mortar, are visible in the Google Maps establishment of the, the app. So if you have more than one branch within a a particular county or state, uh, all of those can be pinned onto the map for locating from any point in place and in time. Uh, it's one click calling through your app to your business location. Uh, it's going to broadcast events and more, and we'll get into more details as we go, and I'll actually show you through a demonstration an actual app in use. So uh, this is going to get, this is where it starts to get exciting. Uh, we have links to social networks within your app. You can have your Twitter account, your Facebook account, your LinkedIn account, your Google account. Anything you want added to your application can be part of that app. This can be shared by email, through Facebook, through Twitter sharing, and even shared with a text message. Uh, your customers can link to your social media pages. You can increase your Facebook fans. You can increase your Twitter followers. And approximately 40% of the social media users access their account nowadays through mobile devices. Facebook knows this, Google knows this, uh, Amazon knows this, everybody knows that people are accessing their sites through their mobile devices while they're on the road and if you don't know that and you're not realizing that that is the way the world is going then you're gonna miss out folks. You need a mobile application for your business to be one of those people who are being picked up on, on a mobile device. That's some limited real estate folks and it's worth a lot right now. Um, this is another thing that we really pride ourselves on over here Best at Mobile are the loyalty coupon programs that we have and there's several different ways we can do this. Um, similar to the punch card system that you'll find with bookstores and restaurants and, and things of that nature. Um, if they keep coming back with their cell phone in their hand they can literally GPS track check-in right there in your establishment and it's going to punch a card to begin to unlock as you can see the, the image here is a lock on this code um, and the QR code is another way that we can scan their their entrance into your store um, and each time they do this it's like punching the punch card and after they say get five scans on their QR uh, like as you see in the app there it's a free bottle of wine or perhaps a 10% off discount or a free car wash or what have you there's a lot of different ways you get or maybe a free consultation um, so with GPS coupons when you're at your locations the customers can check in and receive their bonuses and we also have the QR code coupons which we can create the actual placards that would be mounted on your tables or at your front counter or your checkout counter uh, they're used to replace those punch cards and this increases customer loyalty every day 28% of customers reported that they're extremely likely to increase their visits to a business if they have a loyalty reward card for them and that's just something out of Total Research Corp and Custom Marketing Course Loyalty Monitor study so uh, it, there is proof positive out there that these loyalty programs it's just like uh, getting your frequent flyer miles and if you're one of those folks that likes to collect frequent flyer miles then who are you gonna fly with you're gonna fly with the person who gives you those frequent flyer miles you're not gonna go to another uh, you know individual out there that's giving you access to their airplanes you want the one that's gonna create loyalty for you so that's just another proof positive that those avenues do bring more customers 
Uh, we have live updating on our apps. Uh, you know, there is a process that's gone through where we generate all of the data for the app and we upload these applications to the stores. But from that point on, these apps can be updated live through the app itself and through the back office that's provided access to those who want to get involved in it. Not many really like to deal with the back end of the application if they're not program savvy. Of course, anyone who buys an app has access to that rear panel once the app is published. Um, but if anyone wants to have our business run the service for them, uh, that's conveniently included within the monthly hosting fee for the app itself. So as you can see here, this is just one of the menus that's on this particular app. Uh, you get to be able to take full control of your app's content from the back office. Uh, you can update it, which would allow you to display special events, specials of the week or the day, to access and change your loyalty coupons and your image gallery. For instance, here this shows the inside of the establishment for the nightclub. Um, and that is really a good way to let people know before they even arrive what things are going on. Or you can have your customers add to the gallery by taking live nightly photos of the events that are taking place. Say you have a really big band in for the night. Uh, this gives them the potential to take snapshots of their friends at the tables um, and have them uploaded into your gallery. Uh, everything, all this is inside the app. So This is probably one of our biggest selling points, and that is the push notification. Now what this entails is when your user downloads your app, whether it's from a QR code at the table in the restaurant or from the placard at the checkout counter or just because you've been advertising your app on your website or you tell people about your app as you're you know, doing your daily activity and say, hey, you got to go to Google Play, you got to download my Leo's Bar app. You know, that's what it is. Um, when they do sign up and download the app or download the app, they have the option, they're asked right off the bat here in is an example of Burger Bar would like to send you push notifications. So these notifications may include alerts, sounds, and icon badges. These can be configured in the settings, which means they can turn these off if they would like. But the whole idea is to hopefully get your people using your app regularly and to participate in a dynamic um, that really isn't available with normal advertising. And this is something that will allow you, from the back end of your office, touch the back pocket of your cell phone users. And what that's going to do is it's going to update your con your customers instantly. Say you have a, a special happy hour going on today at 6 p.m. You can send a push notification to your clients or your customers and let them know, hey, we got a special going on 6 p.m. Make sure you're here Friday night. You could send that out Thursday or you could send it out Friday morning and it's going to buzz your person's pocket and their phone's going to go off and they're going to get a, a big window pop up on their app that says, hey, Burger Bar's having a special. Are you coming tonight? It could change their entire plan for the evening with these special offers, updates, and happy hours. You know, they break the barrier between you and your customers. This is something that allows you to be active in their lives and participate in their ongoing activities and almost it gives you that little bit of edge to coerce them into coming by on the weekends or the days that you don't get a lot of customers. You'll be able to open up a buzz for everybody. And this is what I meant at the beginning was the whole idea that mobile apps create a buzz in your customers. It gets them active in your business. It helps them participate in advertising your business for you. Um, this is included completely free with our system and compared to an SMS texting plan that is a totally separate beast. And I don't know if any of you out there are familiar with that, but it's, it's the idea of being able to text customers to their cell phone when they sign up on your list. Um, the average cost of those is around $200 a month just to give you an idea. All right, and here's some of the other great features. Um, I'm going to actually slow down for just a second. I want to see if anybody's over on the chat function on this particular sign, if anybody's been in here. I uh, just wanted to see. It doesn't look like anybody's doing much chatting, and that's fine. I, I'm doing this presentation for purposes. I gave a short notice, and I wanted to make sure I got it up online today because it was Monday. I wanted to get things going, and I will be giving these presentations regularly to make sure that people are familiar with the way we run business over here at Best at Mobile. So I'm just going to stay in the webinar right now, and I'm not going to worry myself about anyone out there. It doesn't seem like we have any questions just yet. So and I better check this to be sure that we don't. do have a nice little feature with this webinar uh, platform that allows me to keep the live chat through live fire or I can also be picking up questions and answers within my blog's back office. So 
Uh, some of the other great features are, of course, the shopping cart, uh, the mailing list sign up for those who are network marketers or people who like to build lists. Uh, the fan wall is the, basically like a Facebook fan page built into your app in a sense where people can just say what they feel like saying about your business, good or bad, I suppose. Uh, the information which allows them to view a map of your facility, whether they want to call you or view your actual website, not just the mobile app itself. You can see here the context that's included, uh, along with being able to email you right through your application. Uh, the events that you have going on on a weekend or weekly basis can be highlighted within the events tab within the mobile app. They'll be able to see a calendar of events that's taking place. This is great for bar owners and restaurants alike. And of course, we mentioned before the sharing aspect, which can cause your app to go viral with others, or at least your business anyway. And that's the whole key factor here is to allow your business to go viral uh, by sharing through email, Facebook, Twitter, and text messaging. Uh, this is an example of where they can find other attractions from within your area. And this is great for restaurant owners who want to bring people in uh, by getting them to know what surrounds them in their particular locale, whether it's museums, or theaters, or uh, certain other attractions like sporting, uh, you know, sporting event places and things like that. Um, you can highlight those within your app to bring a focus to the entire, you know, entertainment district that you belong to. And then, of course, there's a camera mode, and this is how people can bring their uh, snapshots into your gallery. Uh, they could be in your business when they take them, or they could be outside your business while they take them, and actually just send them to you. Now, you have a choice to decide whether those end up in your gallery or not, folks. They don't just automatically post. You are emailed these photos um, direct to your business, whichever email you apply to the business application, and then you decide what ends up on your wall. Now, I'm going to go a little bit outside of the box here, and I'm going to step out for just a minute. Um, this is going to kind of cover marketing the application okay obviously everyone has a budget for advertising and marketing your business app is really no different you're going to want to still market but you're applying hundreds of dollars a week let's say to advertise your business now you can start to steer some of that money away from standard advertising like um, want ads and things like that nature anything that's within the local newspaper or magazines and start really concerning yourself with where people have their eyes. Are people reading the newspaper? Are people reading the the magazines? Are people reading these these classified ads anymore? I, I hate to say it, folks, but if you're spending a lot of money on those types of avenues, you're probably not getting the results you should be. Because where is everyone's phone? It's in their hand. Where are everyone's eyes? In their cell phone. People are reading the newspaper from their cell phone. People are reading their magazines from their cell phone. These people, if you haven't noticed, when you sit down at a dinner table with a bunch of young folks nowadays, three or four out of ten at least have a cell phone in their hand, eyes glued, and it's almost as though you have to tell the people when they sit down for dinner, hey, guys, can you turn off your cell phones? Can you set them down? Can we just move on with what we have here and have an enjoyable dinner? So uh, needless to say, I think you all understand that. Well, apps are a revenue-generating vehicle, and along that line, they also deserve dedicated marketing resources. So I'm just going to touch upon some of the, the necessities of mobile marketing for the next few minutes and let you understand what I mean by that. Uh, capturing and maintaining an app market share does require marketing resources, just like any other product. There are a huge list. Like I said, there were 4 billion apps downloaded on Google and Android's uh, app stores. So when you consider the fact that there's so many different apps out there, you kind of got to get the word out that yours exists. So there is an advertising aspect to the app. Um, it's not enough to just market the app at your traditional customer touch points. I mean, sure, you can have the QR code and have them scan the code to download your app, but those are only your existing customers. If you want more customers, the app can more than adequately bring those in, but what you have to do is advertise the app to do that. So. Um, building a market share through proactive marketing takes resources, and of course that means a marketing budget and ongoing promotion. So don't think for a minute that having a mobile app is going to get you out of advertising costs, but I can guarantee you the advertising spent on promoting a mobile app, you know, you can get into these lifetime burst campaigns and quickly boost your amps rank and get the drives, you know, down to drive the downloads, but those effects aren't going to last in, you know, instantaneously. Sure, it's going to be a big hit. 
but you need to maintain the visibility of your app promotion and that needs to be ongoing. So the first thing I would recommend for anyone who buys into a business app is to make certain that they dedicate a, a proportional amount of advertising budget to make sure that that app does well. Um, and really with app oriented marketing goals there's some things I'm going to mention here and these are just basically buzzwords from the app mobile app industry. This doesn't mean a lot for the type of app that we use but I want you to be familiar with how it relates. Um, there's what's called rank and this is the reach that a target you know app store to <laughs> I'm sorry the app store rank is basically either overall or in category so you're going to have a couple of different things taking place here. When your app starts being downloaded, and this is primarily for the ones that are being sold, the high-end apps that do things as tools, um, this is a little bit of a different style app, but you can certainly rank high in the app store um, or even in the business category. You may rank high with a lot of downloads in the business category because your restaurant app has been downloaded so many times that it's developed its rank over a period of time. Uh, downloads and you know to generate a certain number of app downloads on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. These are goals that this advertising campaign can generate for you. Um, the cost per download. Now, generally, when you buy into the other app platforms, uh, you would have to stay below a certain threshold cost to generate the downloads because there's a cost per download. You might consider if you have five thousand dollars invested in advertising over a month's period for your app, then if you've only downloaded a hundred apps or people have only downloaded a hundred apps what's the cost per download that you're looking at there? Well it's significant, it's about five dollars per download at least um, or I'm sorry at least five fifty dollars per download you definitely want the download cost to be relative to how much you're spending so if you only spent five hundred that month and got a hundred downloads then you only spent five dollars per download and that's really a pretty good advertising cost uh, the loyal user acquisition is really what you're driving for. Um, to get these downloads from users that will absolutely make a purchase through your business and, and keep in mind we haven't even covered the shopping cart aspect of these mobile apps yet. Um, you want people who are going to use the app repeatedly or take other actions that support your overall app strategy. And of course revenue being the biggest, um, you want to hit targets for revenue generated directly through the app. So mobile marketing, uh, marketing on mobile media let's say. And you can see here, these are examples of the small banner ads. I'm sure you're all familiar with seeing these on your mobile phones in the past. Um, here we have one for Cheetos, you know, cheese puffs. We have one for an insurance program through Progressive, Domino's Pizza, um, a wallet. That's actually uh, a way to protect your um, identity, ident from identity theft. And then, of course, a, an online poker site. So we have all these different companies out there who are generating revenue through mobile advertising and I want to touch on this is the other aspect of the mobile industry that not many people really realize I know a lot of them know what's going on but you know brands are driving customers you know they promote ads through their existing touch points like stores and traditional mass media channels like television radio magazine uh, newspaper but what we're finding is that this isn't enough anymore and why is that like I mentioned before People's eyes aren't on newspapers. People's eyes aren't always watching television. They can watch movies on their cell phones. They, they can watch them on their iPads. And, of course, folks, these applications do work just as conveniently on the pad and tablet uh, versions as they do the cell phones. Um, the overall marketing spending is turning to the mobile advertising networks and real-time bidding exchanges. And I'll only touch on this for a moment. And I'll probably give a webinar later in the future that is going to really expound on mobile advertising methods and how you can use mobile advertising to, to help increase traffic and leads for your business. Uh, advertising on dedicated mobile media channels is the fastest way to build and sustain a large customer base. And I'll tell you why, because there are several different ad networks out there. There are aggregate traffic from publishers like mobile websites and apps that display ads. You can find those out there. Uh, uh, buy sell ads I think is one of them in particular where you can buy ad traffic on mobile and websites. Uh, Incentive Networks provides a reward to a user that downloads and engages with an app. So these are places like Free My Apps and Sponsor Pay and this is otherwise known as installing or gamifying. And apps with a good initial engagement mechanics can obtain new users at a low cost and we'll talk about a little bit of that later but um, just Keep in mind the term gamifying. 
Premium traffic. Publishers with their own ad serving capabilities that sell inventory direct to very large buyers or aggregators like Pandora, the Weather Channel, and Twitter. These are the big players out there, folks. This stuff does cost big money to get involved with their advertising programs. Um, so that's really what we're trying to steer clear from. And what we're finding is probably the most cost effective way to build and maintain your mobile advertising traffic is through real time bidding exchanges. Um, it's a rapidly growing advertising channel where high speed automatic technology they, it runs auctions on which an impression by impression basis is developed. And I'm sure if any of you marketers, marketer types out there are familiar with Facebook P, CPC or PPC, pay per click or cost per click programming. And it basically allows you to create small, uh, in, insignificant ads, really. There's not much to them. But they're the little banners that show up on the right side of Facebook on a daily basis. And you get these costs per clicks at around anywhere from a quarter to a dollar a piece, depending on how you like to run your business. But honestly, with mobile, the cost gets down anywhere between one to six cents per click. So such a significant difference between that and the, and the Internet itself. So just as an example, Western Union has something to say about mobile applications. Uh, we launched an iPhone app in the United States about a year and a half ago. It is now processing around 15% of all of WesternUnion.com's transactions that go out from the U.S. Europe will be the next area where, we're, where we roll this out. This is from Greg Marshall, Global Head of Sales and Business Development, Mobile Transaction Services over at Western Union. How would you like that for a title? It's quite a mouthful, to say the least. Um, also, eBay. If you've ever done eBay, um, folks, I have the eBay app on my phone. I use it all the time because I am an eBayer. Uh, users have now listed 100 million items to its marketplace using the eBay app. Now, this is from 2012, so I'm sure it's a lot more than that since then. Uh, by taking a picture of the item with their phone and uploading all the data within minutes. Now, I do this going to the garage sales and local you know, auctions. I take snapshots. I buy the item. I put it up on eBay. I've already got it within seconds, and basically... I've got my mobile market right there in my hand. I can start a business just by walking around with my cell phone. Uh, eBay previously forecasted that it would hit $10 billion in revenue on mobile this year. Based on last year's gross merchandise volume of roughly $60 billion, that works out to about 16% of the company's revenue. And honestly, whenever a part of your business growth and profit potential comes from a percent of your business that is greater than 10 to 15 percent you've got something there folks you've got something that makes sense you've got something that works and you need to reconsider how you're utilizing it in your business uh, Domino's Pizza mobile sales continue to rise sharply by up to 46 point nine percent and now account for eighteen point five percent of total online sales this comes from Nick Dutch multimedia manager over at Domino's Pizza Group so we can see the big players are using mobile we cannot deny it so perhaps the real question here is why don't you have a mobile app and we're gonna try and get to the nuts and bolts of that and decide what it is that's keeping you from having one uh, first question usually on everyone's mind is this what does a mobile app cost we're going to go through the intricate details of that as we go along. Uh, let me just check to see how everyone's doing here. And I'm probably going to actually snapshot out of here for just a second so I can see where everybody's at. Let me just slip over here to the other side. Yes, I am still here. And yes, hopefully you're all still there. I have two, two uh, monitors going here, so I want to make sure everybody's still here. Uh, feel free to chat amongst yourselves if you guys would like to. That's why the live fire chat is there. So that's what I'm hoping to use that for most of the time, and I will continue to use that on these webinars as I move along. So, again, thanks for coming, everybody, and we are going to proceed with the demonstration. So just want to let you know I'm here. Let's stick to business. Back to what I have for you is the screen share. Back up top. All right. Um, with most projects, as we all know, um, and app development is no different, it's going to roll up the design into an entire project here since it's a bear to try and piecemeal images uh, into an app unless you build the entire thing dynamic, and this gets a little wordy, uh, through XML via online databases. Uh, one thing to note is that these costs can vary depending on what devices you're developing for, and that's dependent upon the different cell phone, uh, the different mobile application, Oh, it looks like we have something here. I have a little glitch. Let me see if I can fix this. 
It looks like we're losing our on-air broadcast. I'm still live. Let me reload my page. I'm only pausing, folks, because I want to make sure everybody can still see me. Make sure we're getting everything we need here. Okay, looks like we're still good. Uh, if any of you out there have lost the picture, uh, which I did on my laptop over here, please refresh your screens if you can hear me. Uh, if you can't, uh, you may find out for your own selves that that's what it's going to take. But uh, I would appreciate if you guys that are out there can find a way to continue to generate or stay along with us on this whole thing. So uh, you may or may not see my screen anymore. I'm going to go back to full screen so that we can... I think we're still here. It looks like it. All right, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty, folks, so bear with me. I'm going to go back to the screen share, and hopefully things will be all set. We'll be able to continue to apply this with what's going on. Let's hope so. I hate to have to redo it all. All right, there we go. We'll go back into the slideshow here, and we'll fire this up to make sure everything's still going. I'm going to reload the other page. I think we're still good. If not, Google's got a price to pay. Anyway, does, what does mobile app cost? As I mentioned, um, they can get very expensive. And you're going to find out why in just a moment. Yeah, it's coming back up, folks. I see that it's reloading. So it's just going to take a second here. I'm going to move on because the recording is going to catch up with you anyway. Um, a simple table-based app. One to four grand, folks. It's plain and simple. You provide all the content, the clear direction, and example apps of what you want it to do. Uh, if you know your way around Photoshop, you can supply the graphics, which will cap these projects at around fifteen hundred. Uh, the additional costs are when adding GPS locators, social media integration, like we spoke of earlier, etc. Um, a database app. Now you're talking big money, eight to fifty grand. Uh, if you provide all the content still, the image writing, the sound, etc., the cost comes from creating logic within the app and the architecture of usability and or gameplay. Uh, content is just dropped in and then it's cut off or parsed accordingly. Uh, so they throw a bunch of stuff in it all at once and then they decide what they really don't need. Uh, the projects tend to be very front heavy and that includes cost. Uh, the data drives the game and the framework is the key to how the app functions. Some other factors, uh, games, okay? This is probably the biggest market out there right now. It's huge, it's crazy, it's ridiculous. Um, the mobile app industry itself costs so much. And you know what? I'm seeing that the screen is showing all my screens there. So now let me do something here. I'm going to switch over to something. I know this is probably driving you folks crazy. But I want a full screen here so that you guys can see my screen perfectly. And that's where the problem lies sometimes. So, hold on one second. I'm not losing you yet. Okay. Now you should see a full screen. I apologize for the glitch there. Um, now, like I said, the games, this is a whole different ballgame. And it's the hardest to ballpark. Um, as a benchmark, Angry Birds that we mentioned earlier cost anywhere from 1.25 thousand or 125 thousand uh, to 180k to develop. Although they were the pioneers in this industry, and the, um, many of these racing games use the same type of gyroscope, those all start around 125 grand, folks, uh, without even blinking. And those are just for the code that's used to create those kind of games. Even though they're hyper simple, games can get complicated very simple, very quickly. Um, hooking into a game center, having top scores, uh, integrating with an online community, all that can be tricky. Uh, the benefit of the game is that it downloads at a much greater number than most business or tool apps that are out there. Um, and as a marketer, there's nothing more viral than a fun game, obviously, um, which is something to keep in mind for your return on investment. So you want to ask yourself if you're in the game development, you know, how much do I need to spend to make a fun game? And, and I'm only throwing this in there because this gives you a broad expanse of understanding on how much it costs to create these mobile apps. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, honestly, there are additional includes that come with these. They're, they're the functions that add into your app. 
They're the in-app purchasing product, like the shopping carts, thousand to three thousand uh, dollars. Always for users to buy, or allows for users to buy new content or full versions of the apps. Let's say, um, along with products. Uh, cost spread comes from the amount of the in-app purchasing, the complexity, and whether it's built into the first app or if it's coming from a server later. Um, web services, considering a lot of this has to do with the programming features that are available um, for the apps, and this really doesn't apply for the business apps that we have, and I should probably take this out here. This is a web service that, um, if you know what you're getting into, you can save yourself a lot of headaches if you deal with your developer ahead of time. So um, this is more of an intricate process. Really, when it comes down to game centers, those are about a thousand bucks, and Apple's done a great job of making these integrations easy with their development uh, keyboard, their back end development, the SDK. Uh, as long as the numbers are kept clean, the integrations are pretty easy. And then the share capabilities, like the Twitter, the Facebook, um, the 500 to 1500, and those are for social media, emailing, uh, maybe WordPress website integrations to your blog. Um, lots of options, and most platforms have the robust APIs for reliability or ability to tie those programs together. Um, so total app cost, well, that depends on your app, obviously. Um, and these are focused apps. These generate a specific need, a specific pur purpose, a game app, a tool app. Um, we're talking business apps here. This is, this is not what we're dealing with. And there's usually a, no hidden fees here. Um, I will give you every number I possibly can to show you, but there is a fee that Apple incurs on all of us, and we can't do anything about it. Um, that is that they want $99 per year uh, as a developer to charge out to put apps in the App Store, and then they'll take a 30% cut if you're selling your app. If you have an app out on the marketplace that you're trying to make money from, which is not the purpose of this app. Again, I'm trying to distinguish the separation between a for sale app and a business app. Um, they'll take 30% of each sale of that app that downloads from the, the Apple Store. So is there an alternative to this? Absolutely, and that's what I'm speaking of here. Uh, you're probably saying to yourself, my business doesn't have that kind of advertising budget and can't afford a mobile app for my business. Well, I've shown you the tip of the iceberg of application development. All I can say to you is, yes, you can do a mobile app. We've got a solution to the largest problem with mobile applications, and that's cost. Not only does our application work on the iPhone and iPad platform, but it's also compatible with Android as well. And yes, we have mobile websites too. So what is that alternative? Well, you're probably saying, oh, we got to that part, and that's where the uh, presentation basically clears because I clicked through that so fast. Um, this is what I'm going to throw at you, and this is our standard business pricing, so please don't let this put you into shell shock in any way, shape, or form. Uh, before the presentation's over, we're going to have a special offer for you today. And honestly, the regular professional app design and setup fees can start from anywhere between $795 to $1,295. Now, you just saw me show you that it would cost $50,000 to build a database app. Well, this is a database app, okay? But it's done under a different pretense and for a different purpose and under the, the specifics of a programmed interface that are that is designed specifically for business integration. So we have the ability to cut the cost of that app development because it's not completely and ultimately from scratch, but is completely and ultimately customized to your business. Um, our basic package of Android apps start at the lower range and our high-end apps go up into the $1,200 range. Uh, monthly hosting fees for our apps are $59 to $99 a month, depending on whether you're hosting on the Apple iStore or not, because that is an additional fee. Uh, we allow for unlimited push notifications. We allow for unlimited app downloads, so you're not worried about a cost per download for your client. And this in itself, we're looking at over a $50,000 value. And I'm serious here, folks. This is no joke. What we are offering to you today is worth well over $50,000 in any app market. So how do you get started? Well, I'm gonna once we get done here, and this is the promotion I'm offering you today, everyone. Uh, you can get a hold of us at the number listed, or you can contact us through support at bestatmobile.com. Uh, you can visit our website at bestatmobile.com. And for today only, I am taking that price that you just saw, okay, that $12.95, that $7.95 to $12.95, and I'm going to cut that price in half. I'm going to give everyone that has attended this webinar today the option to get their mobile app right now for not only half the design cost, but for half of the 
the hosting cost. And the only way you're going to get that is to visit our special site that's been established for this webinar, which is known as bestmobileapp.biz, and that's going to give you an offer until midnight tonight. You go to the password, or the special page, and I'm going to take you there in just a minute so you can see what I'm referring to, and it's going to give you a password box that's going to pop up when you click on that tab and all you have to do is enter the password give me 50 and when you do that it's going to give you full access to the discounted order page for uh, through PayPal or credit card it's going to allow you to go and get your mobile app for 50 percent off so we're talking anywhere from four hundred dollars to six hundred dollars for the design of the entire application and the hosting starting anywhere from thirty dollars a month up to forty dollars or forty five dollars a month so um, one of the best offers I can possibly present to you right now would be that 50% off special. And this isn't going to last. I may do this a couple more times in the future. Um, and these are only for those who have come to these webinars. So now that you've seen the special, I want to take you to the next step. And what that is, is I'm going to give you an example of a mobile app in process. So I'm going to close out this little demonstration that I've done. And I'm going to take you on a little journey real quick to another place. And that place is not there. Uh, I'm going to take you over to the website so that you can see what we've got here. And this is Best App Mobile. Um, this is where we run all of our retail sales. And where I want to take you right now is over to our Applications tab. And I'm going to run our App Previewer for you. Actually, no, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to take you to the style showcase because I want you to see something here that um, I did not cover in my demonstration of my, my PowerPoint slides. And I really want everyone to see this because this is important. Um, a lot of people are asking, what is it I can use this app for? How can I apply this to my business? I, I run a bar, or I run a restaurant, or I'm a lawyer. How in the heck am I supposed to use this in my daily routine? Well, this is just an example under our application style showcase page. What I'm going to give you is a list of different businesses that used our mobile apps. Okay, um, this is one for a bar. Okay, you can see a Noble Tuesday Tuesdays at Nobles. They have specials going on every Tuesday. Um, you can create a loyalty coupon system for a bar. You can create a mobile food ordering system. Uh, you can include your bar or club's event schedule. You can send push messages directly to customers, as I mentioned earlier, as to how you get people over to your business. Um, let's say you're a real estate agent. Imagine the possibilities. You can display your available homes for sale. You can create a home buying and selling consultation form. Uh, you can allow clients to view nearly near nearby schools and restaurants and more on the points of interest portion of your map. Uh, you can send push notifications directly to their clients to let them know, hey, I found you that house that you've been looking for. Uh, what if you're a lawyer? Well, you can create a legal consultation form. You can integrate schedules and allow people to make appointments with you. Uh, you can integrate your blog and videos and podcasts for legal advice. Uh, you can give clients one-touch communication with you and make and market to potential clients in the app stores. You know, somebody out there might be thinking, oh, well, how do I get a hold of a lawyer? Oh my gosh, here's a lawyer's app. I'm going to download the lawyer app. Honestly, people go out into the app stores just to download apps to see what they do, people. And you want to be one of those apps that people just download and want to see. So. Um, Pardon my little lack of resources there. Uh, if we keep on going, here's one for restaurants. Obviously, you create a loyalty coupon system. You create a mobile food ordering system. You include restaurant menus and specials. You send push messages to your customers when you've got new product, like your fish catch of the day rolls in. Uh, say you're a band or a DJ. You can sell songs through iTunes right on your app. You can stream videos, podcasts, music. I mean, if I didn't cover these things, obviously, I couldn't cover in an hour everything that's available on these applications, and I really wish I could. I'm going to have to do a two-hour presentation one night. Um, you know, you can display your concert event schedules. You can send push messages directly to your fans. Let your fans upload photos from the concert events. Um, gyms and team and teams out there. Think about the possibilities. You can include a complete workout guide. Uh, you can create a notepad for members to record their progress. You can display a full fitness class schedule. You can send messages to your members to let them know what's going on if you have some special guests coming by. Another one, worship. I can't even touch upon all the ability that this has for people who are, are either religious in nature or have you know any sense of spirit that 
want to connect with their pastor or their priest or their rabbi, um, you know, this allows members to send donations. It includes a prayer request form. You can integrate your blog, your videos, your podcast. You can do your sermons right through your app. Uh, you can show your location so people can find you if you have a special event. Or maybe you just need, maybe your congregants just want to touch out to you and they have a problem and they need to talk. Well, they're going to send something to you to let you know this. That's a convenient way for them to get in touch with you behind the scenes where no one else sees what's going on. And of course, the nonprofits, this is a fast and easy way for you guys to receive your donations through your mobile app. Include your blog, videos, and podcasts. You can display your full event schedule, and you can stay connected by sending messages to your members. And again, these are all available in all formats uh, through Best at Mobile. And I do apologize. This little stupid setting thing keeps popping up. I'm going to get rid of this real quick so that we don't see that anymore. I'm going to turn that right off. I don't want to see that anymore. Okay. Maybe that'll stop it. Maybe that won't. Anyway, so we've gone through the Marian methods that, or I should say the Marian businesses and where we can apply these mobile applications. Now let's go one step further. Let's take a look at a mobile app. Okay, We're going to go into our previewer, and this previewer is available to all of our clients who purchase a mobile app. And when they do, I apologize for the barking dog in the background. He's, uh, they're tearing each other up back there. Um, this previewer allows you to get into your mobile app before it's completed in the design process. You can see it as it grows. Um, and not only that, but if you want to show some people a preview of your app, I'm going to take you to my best at last app. And you can always go take a look at this anytime you want through a previewer. You just enter the app code that's available here. And this will allow you to preview the app that we have developed. Now, this is a neat little feature for all you marketer types out there. Uh, it's going to ask the first person that uh, downloaded, the first time the person downloads your app, whether they want to be included on your mailing list or not. And if they do say yes, they can be added directly to your mail list, which can be incorporated through the app. Um, and I'll show you some of the features in just a moment. But MailChimp, uh, Eye Contact, several of the other big players out there when it comes to autoresponders can be instantly integrated into this app or within the back office of the app itself you can go ahead and download a CSV file of the list as it's generated. So here I'm not going to actually add myself to the mail list but this is my mobile app that I use for best at last and I'm going to it kind of covers all of the aspects less the uh, QR coupon coding and I could show you an example of that in just a moment I believe. Uh, I probably don't have my codes with me. Um, I have some individual codes that can be entered in here to show various applications. Um, in this case, here's an example of the map in process so that we can see where my business is located and people can call, hit my website or email direct from that tab. Uh, I have every website and uh, social platform link available on this menu that connects to all of the websites that I run and generate. Um, so this is instant access to everything that I have going on. Uh, beyond that, I can come back out of here and go into my fan wall, which I have not, I just started my fan wall, so there's nobody on it yet. I have a little about section that generates my story and tells who I am and what I'm about. Uh, gives a little bit of, of a background bio on myself and what I like to do to help others, what my purpose is. Um, along those lines, we can go into the other menu tab buttons here and I can have them enter if they didn't get on in the first click they can come back and sign up for my newsletter and my VIP sec section uh, my blog is fully accessible through my mobile app or people can simply come over here and read the blog articles that I'm casting through my my blog feed um, we can also show them my event list which I should have posted an event for this webinar tonight and I didn't even do that that was my bad but that would be the purpose for that wall. Photos, this is where they would take a snapshot, pick which photo they want to send over to your store, and you're going to get it in an email. And then, of course, there's a gallery section, which I don't actually have the gallery up on mine uh, running right now, I don't believe. No, I don't. Uh, people, in particular, those folks like the, the pastors and such, your congregates could record a message to you in an MP3 file and send you that recording and play it back if they feel they want to double-check it. Um, then there's the marketplace. Okay. Now you also have ties to your YouTube channel. So if you make videos and you do things like that and you want people to see your videos, that's available. 
Um, there's also a section if you want to connect your podcast, which I'm just now setting up my podcast myself, um, so I don't have this feature available on mine yet, but when you do, you can connect that way. I have a bonus section with a lot of uh, um, what you would call available data out there in PDF form, whether it's trainings or whether it's um, uh, public public, I can't even use, I can't think of the word right now, um, like Think and Grow Rich. It's in the public domain. So, you know, you can access any public domain files that you would like to put books that people can read right on your app that are, you know, in relation to what you do, let's say, specialized in your industry, um, restaurant guides or reviews of other restaurants or even of your own restaurant you can add as a bonus feature. Um, and then we get into the marketplace. Now, this is probably one of the largest and most complete uh, aspects of the mobile app that we have. I sell all of my marketing products here within my mobile app. Uh, everything that I generate is, is a profit item here for me and I can literally list you know a ton of stuff in here if I want to. I have memberships that I have assigned. I have live event recordings that I can show people and what I can do is basically go to one of these and I can either have the capture page with a small video where they can go ahead and check out the video and you know if they haven't signed up already for my particular um, mailing list, now I think you'll see some of these here. Whoops! Don't have. Let me get to one that doesn't have the mailing list. No, oh, that's not it. Let's see if I can find one real quick. See how I have all these little squeeze pages on here? Okay, here's one. Now this just goes directly to a sales page, basically. It just takes them down through the, uh, the description of the product, which this is a full-blown marketing product of several packages in one deal. They have an access button to get to the sales page, and then they can zoom in a little bit on this particular format. There's others that are full-scale, uh, large size order pages, and I'll show you that in a second. This is because it's a website that they're ordering from. They can literally just go in and enter the data from the, the website form. Or if they want to go one step further, for instance, with my mobile access, I sell my mobile apps through my setup also. And with my app package, they can get an Android app package, an iPhone app package, or the complete. And this is what I was speaking of. If I go to the complete, this is my high-end product, folks. This is what I charge the most for. Um, this product in and of itself for a standard complete, it's going to get there in just a second. It should load it up. Sometimes it takes a minute. -da -da. Okay, maybe it's not going to load it up. Let's go back. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to try and get back in there and load it up again. Not sure that it, actually it might not in this version. It might have to be a live version. Oh, I don't need that. Okay. Should load this up. Oh, let's say I want to add one. Let me click over here. Not sure why it's still on here. It shouldn't be. Let me try that again. It looks like there's something buzzing on it that's not allowing it to look into the sales page. I may have to look into that. But anyway, it would just take you to a PayPal checkout. Um, basically, when you add to the cart, you know, you can see what's in your cart. Um, these allow a description of each uh, package, per se. And obviously, it's glitching up a little bit because I'm going through the website and onto the Hangout. So let's not concern ourselves too much over why that's not working. Um, and that's really all my app consists of. But you can see the power behind that app. And just to give you an idea of the actual features that are available for these applications, uh, this is our feature menu, which includes GPS directions, one-touch calling, telefriend feature, uh, the business information, the points of interest, the events listing, the contact information, the email photo, the nat native image gallery, the fan wall, the push notifications, the GPS coupons feature. You can add in a flexible counter feature for if your guys are out doing their golfing. You can include a mail list, a tip calculator for your uh, consumers at your restaurant. Of course, the barcode reader, the calculator, the blog, the Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn integration, MySpace integration, or any other social site can be integrated into this. 
Um, along with that, Emma, Campaign Monitor, con Instant Contact, Get Response, Eye Contact, MailChimp, all these autoresponders can be integrated directly into the app through API. Um, Open Table, Podcast Integration, SoundCloud, There's a we have a full and complete support center set up, and then you have your shopping carts like Shopify, Magneto, um, Volusion, BigCommerce, and of course the standard shopping cart feature that's built in, along with a notepad feature, a voice recorder feature, uh, mobile ads feature, Flickr integration, Picasso integration, WooFoo, YouTube, and it all comes in HTML5, iPhone, iPad, and Android format. Can you ask for much more? I highly doubt it. So, um, again, I'll give you an idea here of where the standard pricing lies. This is what we usually retail these products out for, $7.95, $9.95, and $12.95. I'm offering you guys today through the special website, and if you head over to bestmobileapp.biz and get over to this site tonight, before midnight tonight, and this is only going to be midnight tonight, folks. So I will shut this uh, code down after midnight tonight, and it will not be available for you. Uh, the pricing, again, these pages, actually I have it off. So as soon as I, let me open that up right now while I have the chance because I almost forgot I had that shut off. I am going to open up that particular special page right now. You're not seeing what I'm doing. So I am going to go into my blog page for best mobile app, and you're going to see me right now. Let this page go public again because I do turn this off just like that. Oh, where is my specials page? Okay, folks, I guess I'll have to create the specials page for you. Well, another glitch in the system. All right, no biggie. Uh, I will be having to correct my pricing page on the fly, so... Uh, what you're going to get, folks, is don't order through the website right this second, but that code will be available. Um, if you do, you're going to pay full price, and what I need to do is actually add a page to this site that has been removed somehow. That page should have been there for this presentation. Uh, you will see on this page a specials tab, and I, again, apologize that it's not there at this moment in time. There will be a specials tab under the pricing or next to the pricing button. Um, you will click on that specials tab, password box will show up right here. You enter give me 50 and it will give you half price off these mobile apps until midnight tonight. So um, I will make sure to straighten that out as soon as possible. I have an upload that I can do that should get me that page pronto and, and we'll take it from there. So folks, I do appreciate you coming out to see the presentation today. That's all I have for you and I hope everything has gone well. I'm going to come back out and see you guys. So I am here again. Leland Best over Best at Mobile. Um, if we could check real quick to see if anyone has any questions, let me see what we've got here. I suspect there's probably a few folks out there that might have questions. Uh, if you're only seeing my face and not my video, which I don't see why you wouldn't be seeing my video, I have my camera on. Okay, now that we have no questions to follow up on today, I am going to let everyone go so they can get back to their business. This presentation went a little over what I expected, um, and I'm going to cut it shorter a little next time. So um, for those of you who have come, thank you so much, and I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your new mobile application, and from here on out, I will be your sole support along with the team that I have generated behind me. Uh, we'll be more than happy to get you involved with Best at Mobile. So uh, from us over here, Leland Best on the other side, we will see you later on the inside, and we'll meet you at the top. Take care of everybody. Take care.